welcome to a new episode of TTG Conversations 5 Questions video series. I'm Karen Yu, Group Editor of TTG Asia Media. In this episode, we'll find out how luxury travel is tracking back. Giving us insights on this topic is Serge Dai, CEO and founder of This Is Beyond, the company behind luxury travel show Further East. Welcome to the show, Serge. Thank you so much. I'm very happy to be here. I've got five questions for you and here's the first. What's the appetite around the world for luxury travel this year? I think the appetite is huge. Um, and, and I think it's, it's never been so huge, but also never been so meaningful. Uh, I, I think that what we need to realize is after a, a very long pandemic, people have rediscovered the value of time and, and also uh, uh, rediscovered the value of their own mortality for the value of time passing. Mm-hmm. So uh, all of a sudden they realize that they want to uh, have uh, a lot of luxury travel because for me, luxury travel can be defined by a life which is optimized and amplified. And that's really what they want. They want to have which is optimized because they are getting out of the pandemic and they want a life which is very amplified where they feel that they are getting a lot of return on their life and they're getting a lot of moments. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we have all discovered one thing is that uh, this pandemic has robbed us from uh, uh, the most precious time that we have, whatever we are, if you're young kids, you know, or somebody in, uh, in your 20s, in your 50s or 80s, we feel that these two years was probably the most important of our life because they were all at the junctions. And I think that now what we see is that people after saving a lot of money uh, really want to uh, rediscover the world and really want to have uh, uh, experiences that will be life-changing, that will alter the life path and that will allow them to better connect uh, with the loved one but also with the world in general. Mm-hmm. So we can see these huge accelerations at the moment for luxury travel but in a kind of more meaningful kind of way, I think, than it was before. I agree, Serge. So what appeal does Asian destinations hold for buyers and how has this translated into both buyer and exhibitor representation at Further East that's coming up this November? Well, what we have seen is that well, there is a huge demand for Asia. And I think that, you know, one of the reasons that we created Further East is to say that Asia has everything that the world wants, you know, and uh, and everything that the, the, I've said the modern world wants uh, is now almost coming from Asia. So as you know that, you know, a lot of Western society have become uh, utterly materialistic um, and they are craving for this aspect of community, this aspect of spirituality, this aspect of healthy living and this aspect of respect for one another. All that are values that, you know, Asia uh, all the idea and uh, so whatever it's, you know, Ayurvedic food, uh, whatever it's uh, meditations, uh, whatever is giving yourself headspace, but also respect for other is something that comes from Asia. Mm-hmm. And uh, so there is a huge craving for it. Also, uh, we all know that Asia has been closed down and it's not totally open, but it's closed down for quite a while. So there is this huge craving to return to the real things that they can find in Asia. Mm-hmm. So how it translates for, for the East is that we had huge demand for the show, both on exhibitors and uh, by side. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, people from Asia anticipate that uh, there will be a huge demand uh, for the product for the reason that I've just uh, talked about. And so we had a lot of exhibitors that have found a new kind of a confidence in the future. Mm-hmm. And the buyers know that Asia is one of these particularly a hot spot where you can find this idea of being safe, which is quite important, feeling healthy, feeling connected, and, and living an experience which is very rich. And this is the real deal because, like I said, a lot of the uh, five-star hotel chains have taken some of the idea for Asia and tried to transfer them in the Western world. But it's, it's a kind of a, Uh, It could be a copy of the original things and people really want to go to the source of all these ideas. And that's why there is such demand for Asia in general. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, you spoke about wellness travel, slow travel, meaningful travel as some of the most talked about trends uh, that we are seeing in the post-lockdown environment. Are there other important travel trends that not enough people in in the business are spotting? 
Um, I think that um, uh, there is a new trend, which is this idea of, first of all, seclusion. Seclusion. Uh, which is, yeah, which is that people no longer want, you know, they, they, some people are still shy to meet a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've been used to living in their own bubble. And, and for some people, it's been traumatic. For some people, it has been cathartic in many ways. <laughs> but, but I think that what, what people have discovered is that they want to go to untouched places as well. Mm -hmm. They want to be, uh, uh, be in a place where there is no filter created by the tourism. So this idea of going to places that are exotic, but staying in the exotic bubble and not having it being filtered mm -hmm. by uh, a kind of a westernized kind of way about other tourism, uh, is something that is very prominent. And then I think on the idea that we talked about, about wellness, it's not only about wellness. I think for me that, like I was saying, is that it is this two idea of uh, living a life which is optimized and living a life which is amplified. Mm -hmm. uh, and for me, that's two key ideas. And optimize is that I want to make sure that I, I get the best out of what I do, but Amplifications is very much decided that I want to be the best version of myself. Uh, and I think that what people are trying to be is that they want to go to places that talk to them in a way that they can elevate themselves. And we talk about it could be wellness, but it could be biohacking. It could be all these kind of aspects. So, so people are really now embracing the idea that travel is part of a can be part of a transformational process. Mm -hmm. And they are looking for what kind of transformations uh, uh, the trip can offer them. Wellness is one of them, because it's a way to regenerate your body. Uh, but uh, it could be also um, uh, many other things that offer you the possibility to be a, a better version of yourself. Mm -hmm. Obviously, sustainability is a huge deal now. I think we have all seen that a world with a human being seems on occasion a better world and a world where there is probably uh, uh, less pollution around, less waste around, uh, greater conservation. Mm -hmm. So I think that the, in this idea of this is there is two aspects. A, there is an idea that people want something more sustainable, but the thing which is very important, which is more important than anything else, is probably that people no longer want to feel guilty when they travel. So, uh, and it's a bit like, I would say the same concept of buying a Tesla car. Mm -hmm. People are ready to pay a premium to feel that they are playing the part or also that they are not, you know, uh, uh, increasing the consumption of fossil fuel or increasing pollution in cities. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there is this idea now that you need to offer an experience which is guilt free. So if you give a plastic bottle to someone by swimming pool, people might be offended. Say, I'm part of a process which is negative for me. And uh, so I think the first filter is guilt-free. The mm -hmm. next filter is actually sustainability. Mm -hmm. Good points there. Now, Serge, can you tell us about the House of Beyond, you know, the private members club that you launched in December 2020 for the high-end travel community? How has it benefited the, the community? And how do you see it evolving now that face-to-face -face engagements are back? Yes, yeah, so, so the idea of the club is, first of all, to uh, fulfill our promise, which is to keep people connected. So um, it started by a digital offering, whereby our idea was to create a club where we create this notion of ubiquity. So we have to be uh, at different places at the same time. And uh, to make you know, a world which is uh, global a little bit more local. So the, the idea was to try to get people together a bit probably like, you know, the telephone in the 19th century. So it was bringing people together. And, uh, and we created this platform with, uh, uh, which is incredibly powerful. We can, you can, uh, an exhibitor can search by agents, uh, uh, search by destinations, and take appointments with them, message them. And we organize a lot of digital programming. But the future for us is physical. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the idea is very much to create um, events all around the world uh, on a 365 days uh, basis, but uh, across six continents, and, and making sure that we create uh, uh, local events, regional events, and global events where people can stay connected and gather, uh, be gathered together. Uh, this is very much this idea of creating a community, which is both digital and physical, but creating this sense of belonging. 
-hmm. and, and this will evolve in something bigger as we progress. But I think that all uh, our uh, private business plan is A, creating a digital community, B, transferring the digital community in something which is physical. And instead of having like five shows where people can gather once a year, having lots of places where people feel a sense of belonging and can gather many times a year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great. Now, lastly, can you give us a sneak peek into this year's Further East? You know, what exciting moments can attendees expect when they meet in Bali this November? Well, I think it's going to be, uh, I think all our shows are going to be uh, upgraded this year because we, after, after three years of disappearing from the face of the earth, <laughs> we want to come back with a bang and we want to make sure that we create, we create vivid memories. I, th I think, our, our, you know, one of the things that differentiates ourselves from our competitors is that we always say like, our competitors are in the dating business, we're in the falling in love business. <laughs> so we, we create the conditions and, and we create vivid memories where people feel I was there, we share that moment and it will be very special. So this year, you know, this show that started as a, the first barefoot travel trade show and many people are barefoot because we are on the stretch of the beach with, with some of the best suppliers of Asia and some of the best international and regional buyers. Uh, we, we're changing everything. We have this open house, which is basically um, uh, kind of a mini conference park festival which is a way to gather people in an informal way. And, and that's going to be uh, really epic. That's going to take place at the potato head. We're going to have two incredible parties because once again, it's about creating these kind of a, 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 a incredible uh, memories, uh, which is going to take place at the W and uh, at the Legion. And, and also it's that the theme of the show now is stretching outside just Asia, but also uh, 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 Australasia. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why it's about new horizons in many ways. It's providing new horizons for everyone. We want to provide new horizons for exhibitors to making sure that there is buyers that comes from far field as ever before. But we want also to include our friend from Australasia because they, they wanted to be part of that show when it was just Asia only. So I think it will give us a greater scope and, and a greater size. And there will be lots of very cool activations. You know, uh, John Hardy that we very know would have a, a, an activation there. Jolly would have an activation. So there'll be many, many things happen happening, and we'll make sure there is uh, many, many surprises. Uh, but further East will stay uh, true to his uh, concept, uh, which is we never try to. Um, we always try to create something which is remain magical. Uh, where uh, people leave vivid experience and and go there with the intention to make business and come back with the idea that they've, they've met more than business partners but they've met friends for life and uh, and that's what for us is very important because we think that business is created to trust is, and this trust is created to the concept of shared experience mm -hmm. and, and which is very much the motto all across our companies where we say that a role is to transform industry into an inspired community. It's wonderful, Serge. I hope a lot of people fall in love in Bali when they meet uh, together in this community. Past and future episodes of TTG Conversations, five questions can be found on the TTG YouTube channel. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you on the next episode. Goodbye. <laughs>